Hello, little girl. What are you doing? Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I've got a relatively short video for you. We've got a machine shop tour, the machine shop that actually started my interest in machining. And I've showed the machine shop way in the past, but a lot has changed. It's actually at the my place of work. So I wanna show you guys an updated shop tour of that machine shop. Also, we're gonna work on the Brown and Sharp 618 MicroMaster. I wanna see if adding some oil to that helps with the jerking, the hesitation, the weird acting of the hydraulic system on there because it's pretty low right now. I've also got a list of 10 of my most favorite hand tools. I know a lot of you guys like lists like that. I know I love watching other people's lists and comparing them to mine. So I'm gonna share with you some of my 10 most favorite tools. We're gonna to get a machine shop tour and we're gonna work on the Brown Sharp 618 MicroMaster. See if adding oil to it helps it or not. So to get everybody up to speed on what's going on with this grinder, right now it's got five gallons of oil in this thing. It was empty when it showed up, but this thing come from the auction, I knew absolutely nothing about it. So we put five gallons in it, hoping that that would be enough to run this thing and you know, see if it was worth you know, filling up with oil. It, Cause a lot of times grinders, especially if you didn't get to totally check one out before you bought it, it's a, you're taking a big chance buying a used, a used grinder. Because of the nature of these machines, they produce a ton of abrasive particles and that gets in the ways and stuff and they just wear out. It's just the way, the way that it goes. So before investing all of the money that it takes to buy 15 gallons of oil, that's, that's more than the grinder cost is what I'm trying to say. We put five in it. I think with five gallons in this thing, the hydraulic system's noisy and it's aerating the fluid. The table's kind of herky-jerky on here. I've showed this in the past, but I'll show you super quick. We'll fire this thing up. You'll be able to hear it before we add this extra oil. I'll show you what's going on with the table. Hopefully when we add this oil, it'll quiet it down and take away the herky-jerkiness. And if it doesn't, maybe we'll tear into this thing, if I have time, that is, and uh, see if we can find what the problem is. What <laughs> this one problem is out of maybe many. I don't know, but you'll see. Let me get you over here. We'll fire this thing up. You'll hear it and then we'll add the oil. See if we can tell the difference. So before I turn this thing on, I want you to calibrate your ear to the noise that you hear because I want to see if we can tell the difference in between before adding extra oil and after adding extra oil. So I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to turn the table on. You'll see, you know, you'll see the herky jerkiness of it and you'll hear the noise of the hydraulic fluid in here. I can hear it churning. Hopefully you can hear that as well. So it's not a super noisy machine. So I got it on full travel. You can see this handle's not fully disengaging either. I don't know if maybe that's part of the pausing. See how it pauses? Pause, slows down, speeds up. Seems like it's in kind of the same spot every time. So I'm thinking potentially it may just be a flaw or an error in the hydraulic system. I don't know. Listen to it, see it. We're gonna shut it down and then uh, add the oil. See if that makes a difference. Listen. The spindle on this thing I think is in good shape. So getting this thing off of the pallet, maybe, maybe a good job. But before I take it off this pallet, I kind of want to be sure that it's in def decent enough shape to to mess with. When you pour from a five gallon bucket, put the spout on the top. That way it doesn't glug, glug, glug. So this is a vacuolon 
mobile, 1405. That's what we're using. There we go, drink up, little grinder. So now that we got the oil in it, let's turn it on. Make sure your ear is set back to the calibration that it was when we first ran this. And let's see if we, if we hear a difference. I hear a difference. It's not bubbling, churning like it was before. I'm gonna let it run for just a second. Let it kind of flush any air that probably I got in the system out of it. And then we'll turn the table on and see if that helps the herky jerkiness of this thing. So this light outside of my shop is awesome, but the downfall to this light is that it attracts a gazillion bugs every night. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know that the camera's picking it up, but they're swarmed on the doors and I have to shoot in super quick or else they'll go in and then they'll fly around the lights in there and They, they bite as well. Uh, they, they do. Those little green bugs, they bite. So let me get you a shot just in case that camera's not picking up the swarm that's in front of this door. Come on, let's go. On the count of three, I'm going to open this door and I want you to shoot in super quick to minimize the bugs. Come on, let's go. So this thing's been running for, I don't know, three or four minutes, maybe five minutes. Enough time to circulate through the system. It's definitely quieter. So let's see, does it make any difference at all? It does. That, I'm gonna be honest, 100% honest. I fully expected adding oil to this thing to do nothing more than quieten it down. Let's make sure it wasn't just a fluke. No, that, that is working like it should. I fully expected that to do nothing to the hydraulic. I thought that for sure this thing had, uh, you know, some sort of O-ring or something shot in it. And I was prepared to tear into this. But there you go. It, that's what it was. It was just the system had air in it. So there you go, the more you know. Now you can tell your friends if they buy a Brown & Sharp 618 MicroMaster and it doesn't have oil in it, that they can't just get away with putting five gallons in it to check it out. They gotta commit to at least 10. That's awesome, I can't tell you how much, seriously, how much better I feel about this grinder just with it working the way that it should with a table. So I believe this thing is 100% worth investing the time and effort it is to get this thing off the pallet, put the extra oil in it, uh, to finish dressing this chuck. I've just been messing around getting it closer because it was so far off. This thing had been used for, for years, um, probably just to do rough work is what I'm guessing. And they didn't care if the chuck was right on the money. They were grinding parts that didn't need to be. They needed a good finish maybe, not to be within you know a few tenths. So, my plan is to get this thing off the pallet, although I can't do it this week, unfortunately. I just don't have the time. Um, I'm going to pull this chuck off of the table, and I'm going to clean up the underneath of the chuck. I'm going to grind the table in, because in order for me to test this machine properly, the chuck needs pulled off. It needs cleaned off underneath. It needs uh, the table ground with the machine, and then 
put back on and then it needs to have a flood coolant system put on it which I'll pull the other one because it's a mo basically an external unit. I'll pull it off of the other grinder and, uh, and I'll put it on this one and I'll grind this chuck in uh, under flood coolant that way at least I think I'll get the most accurate grind uh, by doing it under flood coolant. It's hard to grind a big chuck like this uh, without generating heat and heat makes these things warp and it doesn't take hardly anything to, to make them move around and you can chase your tail. So I've always had the best luck grinding the chuck in with it just flooded with coolant. So unfortunately I don't have the time to do the, to get this off the pallet this week. This is a full day job for me without having a piece of equipment to lift this thing. I'm, I don't know, maybe I can ask my neighbor uh, with his, he's got some equipment. He can maybe be able to come and lift it off or else I'll have to figure out a MacGyver way to get this thing off the pallet, which, you know, six, half dozen, either way, it's coming off this pallet and we are gonna dive into this machine quite a bit deeper. So I've got something different for you guys this this week. I have a machine shop tour. Now this is not just any machine shop. This is, to me, it is a very special shop. One that I've learned a ton in. And I have showed this place in the past, but that's been years ago and a lot has changed. Now keep in mind, this is not, this is not a production machine shop. We don't make one single part and do a lot of them. What we do is make a lot of one-off parts. Sometimes we'll make twos and threes of items, but the majority of time we make one item and the way that those parts come to us is in either the form of the drawing or just scientists or an engineer will walk in the shop they'll tell us hey we're doing this experiment we need an apparatus or vessel or whatever that is about this size it needs to survive in this type of environment and it needs to do X, Y, and Z, and we'll bounce ideas back and forth until we come up with, you know, a design that, that suits them. And this is not things, at least the majority of things, that, that you can buy because it is a research machine shop. So I want to take you around here, show you some of these machines, because a lot of them are new, you know, to the shop, and, uh, you know, show you, the, show you the shop that I've worked years in and I've had a lot of fun in. So let me get turned around here and uh, and I'll give you a quick tour around the shop. So I'm super excited to share this tour with you. Hopefully I can do it before my battery dies. But let's start up front here. We're going to go through this pretty quick. You'll have to excuse some of the mess because uh, we're moving things around. We've got new equipment that just showed up and more that's on the way. So let's start off with a little do more micro drill press. Very nice little piece. We picked this up to to run the smaller drills obviously so zero or 61 to 80 drill index that i dropped just a second ago and spilt some of the drills out of if you notice the table on this thing is threaded like a fixture plate and the table moves and not the drill so the smaller drill beds obviously you want to run them super fast a little albrick keyless chuck counterweight so you can feel exactly what the drill is doing when you're when you're drilling by hand. It's also got uh, places for dial indicators, so you can accurately offset. You see this table moves forward, back, and right and left. Moves on some little dovetail ways. It is a super super nice little drill press. We use it uh, to do sprayer nozzles or, or extruder nozzles. Just you know stuff like that where we have to drill very small holes got the variable speed controller got our ball door uh, buffer grinder just typical for any you know, one-off shop wire wheel on one side and a stone on the other on the ball door stand this is where i modeled my cup after and look how rusted this thing is get the little hole in the bottom little pivot very nice I built one like that because I enjoyed using that one so much to so swivel, swivel it out of the way. 
to go over to the welding area. I spent a lot of time over here. Uh, you can probably tell because most of the tables that I work at are full of stuff. I built this welding table. It's half inch, just cold rolled plate, uh, quarter inch thick angle iron. Built it probably 12, 13 years ago. You can see how I angled the iron in. So you can clamp on the edge of the table there. You can clamp your work to the table or you can clamp your ground, just like I've done there, to the table. Also got a hole here, five eighths hole. So my TIG torch can set on there. Got the little Wilton bullet vise. Favorite vices of all time. We've got the Miller Dynasty 200. We've got hundreds and hundreds of hours on this thing. And great welder got the water cooler. Got the Hobart Beta MIG 200. That thing is a beast of a welder. You're, you're definitely, you're not going to hit its uh, duty cycle. You're going to hit your duty cycle before you wear, before you burn that thing up. It's been around and will run wire just continuously. Got our finger brake, which we don't use a whole lot, but we do on occasion to build uh, little electrical boxes and stuff for for fixture or for uh, apparatuses that we're making. It's a Dico. See, it's got some rust on it. We had a water line break upstairs, and it literally rained in this shop. And we're still cleaning up the mess from that. The belt sander, belt disc, common. It's a Wilton. We've got our Klimco blast cabinet. Pretty nice piece. Takes up a ton of space though, and we don't use it a whole lot. We're debating on, you know, surplusing it and using the space that this thing takes up for something maybe a little more useful uh, for our needs. We've got the little Arbor Press, just a cheap overseas Arbor Press, which I use quite often. If you're pressing in the multiples and the press is not hard, the Arbor Press is the way to go because you're just so much quicker in most cases than a hydraulic press and you can really feel what's going on so I like having arbor press in a shop even if you do have a hydraulic press and here's a new machine to the shop which i have zero time on I haven't ran it at all uh, but uh, the other guy in the shop has ran it a little it's probably ran a handful of parts so that's a little 8l tormach cnc lathe nice controller It runs super smooth. You know, I can't uh, say yay or nay on it as far as great or not because I don't have any experience with it. But so far, so good. Little built in coolant tray, pump. You can see, it doesn't even have coolant in it yet. This thing is brand spanking new. Turn, I guess. There's parts and pieces that it comes with. General work table, small granite plate, storage for nuts and bolts. Now this lathe, we picked this up, I don't know, maybe a year or two after I started here, so it's 13 years or so. You know, we've had this thing, not super happy with it, to be honest. It's always been noisy. It's always blown out seals and leaked oil. It's a pain to thread on. You know, the charts are basically in hieroglyphs. This is soon to leave, and we're going to be uh, replacing it with a... I'll show you when we get it. But this is the lathe that we've been using for quite some time. I do like the fact that it has power traverse on both the saddle and the cross slide, which is nice. New to us, actually brand new altogether, 3-axis CNC, nice big... Uh, I forget what the... It's 12 by 54, I think, box ways. Kent. So far, so good. This thing's probably got about 10 hours on it or so, is what I'm guessing. Power draw bar, still R8 call it. Nice controller. Nice controller. General milling, you know, table hold downs, R8 call it's chucks for this lathe, uh, you know, set up stuff. In our cabinets over here, which I'm not going to unlock, rags, just general shop supplies, uh, fluids, 
I mean, you get the idea, end mills, uh, reamers, and, and so on. We have the Kalamazoo horizontal saw. Love to find one of these for myself. But, uh, you know, this thing, just because of using this thing for years and just it being so reliable, it's easy and quick to use. It does eat a lot of space if you don't cut big stuff a whole lot. But as far as just a workhorse, this has been a great, great saw. I'm not crazy about the open coolant trough like that. But, you know, it is what it is. We've got our Maximat Super 11. Just put a DRO on it as well. 5C collets. This is a awesome machine. Uh, Stefan Gotzwinner has uh, an identical machine to this. And uh, yeah, I love this one. It's just a smooth, smooth running little piece of equipment. General workbench, like the wood topped workbenches. And here's where my love for these uh, big, I, I consider them a Wilton, but I forget the manufacturer. They're Swedish drill press. This is where my love for them started. Using this one for years here made me really want one. So now I've got two in my shop. One that's identical to this basically, and then uh, one that is got the uh, power down feed. So love that drill press. Big Duval bandsaw. I forget what its throat depth is. It's like 24, I believe. 24 by 16. Got the blade welder. That's where my love for do all started as well. Running this saw, you know, just good quality, good quality machine. Although I will say that I like mine, the 36 inch with hydraulic feed table, quite a bit better than this one. It's still, still a very good saw. And I am running out of battery. We're gonna have to speed up. General nut and bolt storage, taps and dies. General use shop drop. So anytime we get a project in, if there is excess material, we label it, stick it on the shelf, and people will come in here. People that are you know, able to use these machines, they will come in here, they can find stock from this shelf, and they're free to use it. Or we can use it for you know, little projects that, that we find that we need extra stock for. Plastics, uh, mostly stainless um, and exotics. We don't do a lot of... Uh, we don't do a lot of carbon steel here. I mean, you get the idea. All right, I'm about out of battery. You get the idea. We got plasma cutter. We've got uh, a little Dake hydraulic press that we that we like. You know, we were gonna get a bigger one, but then again, you know, the small one makes more sense for us here. Another small uh, bench grinder. So I am out of battery. And I'm going to call that a successful trip around the shop. I owe a lot of my knowledge to this place, the knowledge that I've gained. So, great little place. I've learned a lot working here. So I want to take a break for a second and introduce you to my good buddy, Bradley Irvin. Hello again. Yep, he's been on the channel before, a couple months ago. Yep, March. Yep, he introduced... My buddy Brad and his hot sauce, Full Tang is the name of it. Yep, grab a bottle there. And we want to thank all the viewers out there who participated and bought some of this hot sauce. It's one of my very favorites. And I'm not just saying that because Bradley is my buddy. I'm just saying that because... Oh, you're not? I thought you were. I'm not. Okay, it's I good really, to know. I really do enjoy it. I use it sparingly but because uh, it is hot, but it does have good flavor as well. I want to thank everybody who picked up a bottle of that hot sauce. It definitely helped my buddy out. Yes, and I want to thank you too. Um, you all came out in force that day. We sold a lot of bottles. We got enough funding for a brand new batch, and we got enough funding to cover some trademarks and legal fees and such. So I wanted to thank you all. And I also wanted to apologize. I know some of you all put some photos on Amazon. Yeah, there'll and, be a link in the description yeah. where you can pick this up and it will be from Amazon. But Amazon deleted those pictures and I wanted to know why and they wouldn't get back to me. So, I mean, what can you expect? Amazon's just one of those small startup companies, so we can't expect them to yeah, be Yeah, I'm sure perfect. they don't have the manpower to... Definitely not, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to say thank you to the people who, you know, 
went out on a limb, tried it, tried Bradley's hot sauce, got a bunch of great reviews. People oh, yeah. seemed to love it oh, overall. Yeah. You know, they, people seemed to love it. They had a couple said, man, that's pretty hot. Mm. A little too hot. For some I, people. Yeah, but very few. It, it's good stuff. So if you would like to help my buddy Bradley out, which he is a U.S. veteran as well, and I, he won't say it, but I will. So help uh, him out. Yes. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a new business and a good buddy of mine, and I would really love to see him succeed. So... I appreciate all of you all, and I hope you all enjoy Full Tang. Yeah. One last thing. To you guys who live across the pond, over there in Europe, England and such, this product's not available to you, unfortunately. Uh, the red tape involved is monstrous. Maybe at the future. Uh, yeah, but hopefully in the future we'll be able to get it out to you all. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So as tool parents, we love all of our tools. But there are some, let's just be honest, that are our favorites. And I have gathered on the bench here a few of the tools that I just go to the, if I need a tool to do a certain thing, these are the ones that I grab. Even though I may have several that do very similar things, these are just the ones that seem to fit my hands well, ones that I trust to get the job done, and are my favorites. Some are old favorites, some are new favorites, and I want to share with you my lineup. Now, some of them are electrical tools, some of them are mechanical tools, some are just tools in general. You'll see. I've got several here that hopefully some of you guys will have the same ones and maybe you'll feel the same. I don't know. Some of you may not have some of these and you may want to go out and grab them to, to see if they fit your hands as, as well as they fit mine. So let me show you the tools that I have on here. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while. So some of these tools I picked up recently, and I just find myself grabbing them. Every time I need a tool to do what this tool does, these are the ones that I grab. And as far as pry bars go, these Titan adjustable pry bars, I picked these up from KBC Tools, by the way. These are awesome. I have found myself, every time I go to get a pry bar, if this will possibly suit the job that needs done, these are the ones that I grab. I haven't broke them yet, and I tell you, I've put pipes on these things and really you know, really struggled with them to get some things apart. Favorite, Titan brand from KBC Tools. Also from KBC is this set of Titan pistol grip pliers, needle nose pliers. The reason why that I like these angled nosed pliers is because like if you're doing brake work, grab and you pull, you can see your hands at a much more natural angle than what it would be with your standard straight pliers. Hard to pull, even though I love these. Ipex extended nose pliers, you use them all the time. They made it on my list. But as far as comfortable to use, ergonomic, I guess, these Titan brand from KBC. Really love these tools, these, these uh, pliers. Another one is these Klein scissors. Now, I got in trouble when I first showed these some time ago. People said these are considered snips if you're an electrician. Klein calls them scissors. They're a small set, great for cutting electrical tape or wire. They're just super nice set of, you know, small scissors. You can stick them in your pocket. You know, if you're going out to a vehicle or whatever, or to a workplace to do electric work, put them in your tool bag. You know, it's not a huge set. My favorite pair of scissors in the shop are these little Klein. Picked those up at uh, Granger when I was picking up some tools there, walked through. Now, another recent favorite, all of these are within the last couple years. Another recent favorite is this, now it's not the brand, but these battery powered ratchets. I got one in a quarter inch drive, one and three eighths drive, and I find I use these constantly now that I got them. I've got air powered ratchets, but then you got it, you're dealing with an air hose. But just the air ratchets in general, they made my life so much easier. And I can't imagine doing multiple bolts now without them. Sitting there like we used to do, cranking a ratchet, no thank you. These are awesome. Battery lasts pretty good on them. You know, not affiliated with these, I'm just telling you that that is on my list of favorite tools. Another favorite is these Klein, or this Klein screwdriver. Everybody's seen these. If you've used them, I mean, you probably feel about the same. Phillips or 
straight and you can get different bits for these if you're doing you know like torques or stuff like that you can get different ends for them but this is my favorite go-to screwdriver the handle feels good in my hand I feel like i get good leverage on it and when the bit gets wore out i don't have to throw the screwdriver away all i gotta do is replace the tip so i really like that definitely a nice screwdriver now, as far as adjustable wrenches go this looks big and cumbersome but it is my favorite it's made by cobalt it's a uh, steel workers wrench for lining up holes in, in, uh, in steel work. I find myself when I go to grab an, uh, why? I don't know, because the handle's round. It feels really good. Plus I can line up holes with it if I want to. Plus I can use it as a hammer. This is my go-to adjustable wrench when I got a big uh, bolt or something that I gotta grab onto. So, as far as cutters, these Klein, I guess I call them linesman snips, but they're just electrical electrical cutters. I like these because they are made of good quality steel. I've yet to dull uh, the cutters on them. They've got a really long handle on them, so you've got good leverage when you go to cut. Those Klein uh, lineman cutters is what I call them. As far as channel locks go, these Nipex Cobra, I think is the name. Yeah, Cobra. I've got a set of three of these. A viewer picked me these up, and ever since I got them, I love them. Super sharp, serrated jaws. I love the way that the jaw is shaped, so you can grab a nut that's been rounded off and, uh, and really get a hold of it. Plus, they've got a lot of positions that these can go in where your normal adjustable channel locks like these, they got like six or seven positions where this, I mean, you can really dial in where you want you know, where you want your uh, grip to be when you're grabbing onto the, to the bolt or nut or whatever. Now, as far as small ratcheting screwdriver, this. It's made by Sunix. This was picked up off Amazon. It's got multiple bits. It's just a very small ratchet. It's for low clearance. When you're trying to get into a tight spot, you've got a screw that's in a really tight spot. You can't get a driver in on it. That is one of my most favorite tools. And when I go out on a job to do something, I'll throw this in the toolbox because you never know when you're gonna need something like this. And for me, this has lasted, it's been great. You know, I don't, other than Sunex, I don't know uh, where it come from. Uh, I could probably take, give you a good guess, but yeah, probably other brands would be very similar. This iFixit, which I showed here recently, so I'm not gonna go over it very, very much, but this iFixit screwdriver, uh, bundle. Like if I'm doing electrical work, like small cell phones, whatever, this small screwdriver comes with all the small bits that you could ever, ever want. The large screwdriver is super nice as well. It's just a great set. You can use the top as a parts tray. It's magnetic. It sticks on there. And then finally on my list is this Top Dawn. It's not the brand that I'm telling you I like. It's having a boost pack, a small battery powered boost pack. That's what, that's what this is about. It's not, not about the brand. It's about the idea, the tool. And that this thing has saved me several times. Elizabeth carries it in her, in her car. And if she, let's say her phone dies or something, she can pack this around with her, stick it in her purse. It's got a charge port on it. It's got a flashlight on it, on and on and on. It's just a really good tool to have. So there you go. That is my quick list of tools that I love and tools that I grab when I go to my box. The first ones that I grab, if, if they'll suit the job that I'm doing, that is. Cora, what are you doing? All right, guys, that is it for this week. Uh, keep your eyes open for those who are interested in the progress that I've made on Johnny Cash, Elizabeth's Crew Cab Dooley. I'm going to have a video coming out for it, hopefully Sunday. We'll see. Uh, but uh, can't, I can't make any promises, but uh, that's the plan. Uh, I literally had like four hours this week to film what I did for, for you guys. Just been super busy. So we got the grinder, at least to a point to where I'm happy enough to pull it off the pallet, set it on the floor, and really start digging into it. Uh, I did not think that that was gonna fix it. 
I'll be honest, I did not think that that was going to do anything other than maybe quieten down the system. I thought that it had hydraulic issues, and I was not really looking forward to digging into it, but I was prepared to. Uh, we did a top 10, let's say, tool list, gave you a shop tour of the place that I've worked at for, you know, still do for, you know, years, over a decade. So that is it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, believe me, I do appreciate it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.